Hello, my name is Glenn Hall and today is December 4th, 2019. This is part 19 of my video series, The Mystery of the Beast. It would be very helpful to all of you to listen to all of the previous videos in order to fully grasp everything that I'm saying in this video, but let's go ahead and get started with this one. This video is called The Great Apostasy. I want to take you to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, which is where that word comes from. In the New American Standard Bible, it says, Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter, as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. That's what I'm talking about in this video today. The great apostasy. In other versions, let's look at a couple other versions. In the King James Version, in verse 3, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Most people have interpreted this to mean a falling away from the faith or an apostasy. That's where the word apostasy comes from and and the way apostasy is understood is that apostasy means that you fall away from faith in Christ. I'm going to show you today that that is not at all what this verse is talking about. Let's look at another translation of this scripture. This one is from the English Standard Version. Verse 3 says, Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first. We're talking about the day of the Lord. People thought, people were preaching that Christ had already come back. In fact, there's people who say that today, that the return of the Lord has already occurred, and that is absolutely false. Another version, this is from the Orthodox Jewish Bible, verse 3. Let no one in any way lead you astray because unless the merid, and that's translated rebellion, revolt, betrayal, defection of apostasy. So this word apostasia means a rebellion, a revolt. Some have translated it as meaning divorcement. Another, Jonathan Kahn, states that it means a stepping away from a state of being. The general translation these days is that it means a rebellion. What could this rebellion be? I hope all of you are paying attention to the current events that are going on, especially the Q posts and everything happening with respect to the impeachment of Donald Trump. This is the last Q post. It was posted, I believe, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, 8.49 p.m. This was a retweet or a posting of Donald Trump's retweet of this meme. Now that Russia collusion is a proven lie, when do the trials for treason begin? And then it has many of the major players of the treason that has unfolded against our president, against our nation, against us. When did the trials begin? But that wasn't all that Q posted in this last post. He also posted this, and let's look at it. And now... Let's play it again. I'm going to pull the whole thing down. I'm going to bring the whole fucking diseased, corrupt temple down on your head. It's got to be biblical. 
It's going to be biblical. I'm going to bring the whole thing down on your head. That is what we are dealing with today. Have you noticed the lawlessness being carried on by the Democrats today with respect to this impeachment fiasco going on? Trump and the Republicans have no rights. They do not have due process rights. I've been an attorney for 30 years. <clears throat> An accused always has due process rights. The Democrats are not even releasing all of the transcripts of the interviews that they are lawlessly doing in private in the basement of the Capitol building. What is going on? What, what are we seeing unfold? Well, we have been in the midst of, I believe, the sixth bull of wrath. This is Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet three unclean spirits like frogs, for they are demonic spirits performing signs who go abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for the battle for battle on the great day of God the Almighty. I believe that this is exactly what we witnessed in the 16 years, and even more than that, prior to Donald Trump being elected. The seventh beast, the head, head of the seventh beast, was still in charge. And the dragon, of course, is Satan. The beast, the government of men, the governments of men. And we have, and the false prophet is the one who convinces all the people to worship the beast and to worship the government of men rather than to worship God. So out of all three of these come forth demonic spirits. They perform signs. They get everybody on board. And this is all of God. To assemble them for battle on the great day of God the Almighty. That is the day of wrath. That is the day of the Lord that we're talking about. But here's a very interesting verse. Verse 15. This is Jesus directly speaking to us, to you and to me. Behold, I am coming like a thief. In other words, get ready now. Get ready now when you see this happening. I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on, that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. Are you ready? Are you ready what is unfolding? Are you ready for the return of the Lord? We are seeing things occurring now, and I'm going to make this exceedingly clear to you as this video progresses today. And in the midst of this time, Jesus says, this is the time to be ready. I'm coming like a thief. You, don't, you do not expect what is going to happen. You do not expect a thief to come into your home. The church, those who have interpreted the word of God, do not expect what is happening because they do not interpret the word correctly. Next verse, verse 16. And they assembled them at the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Okay, this battle on the great day of God the Almighty is the battle of Armageddon. Armageddon, that's the mind. It's the battle for the mind. That's what we're involved in right now. And then, no surprise what happens next. After the sixth bowl is the seventh, 
The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne, saying, It is done. It is done. We have now come to the culmination of history before the kingdom of God rules on earth. And there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a great earthquake such as there had never been since man was on the earth. So great was that earthquake. The great city we saw last time, that's Babylon the Great, was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and God remembered Babylon the Great to make her drain the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. And every island fled away, and no mountains were to be found. Mountains are governments of men. We will continue here. Now, immediately after that verse in Revelation 16, we come to Revelation 17, which says, Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come. I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality, and with the wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on earth have become drunk. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns. This is the beast that we just saw back in Revelation 16 that was speaking forth demonic spirits because the beast, the beast is man and the beast generally speaks forth the words of Satan and speaks forth from a demonic spirit rather than the spirit of Christ. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. This is Babylon the Great sitting on the beast. That's what I want you to see right now. And when Revelation 17 begins... That's the reality. Babylon the Great, which is the satanic spirit that controls the world, is sitting on the beast, sitting on man. The heads of the beast are the leaders of the governments of men that control the affairs of the governments. And those leaders generally speak forth demonic utterances. They are controlled by this demonic spirit called Babylon the Great that sits on the beast. And she has sat upon the beast for the entire 6,000 year history of man, as I showed in earlier videos. So this at this time in Revelation 17, we have the woman sitting on the beast and like a person who would be riding a horse, pulling the reins, controlling the beast, just like a horse rider would control the horse. So the woman, Babylon the Great, is controlling the beast. That's the picture we have. Now, what we need to do is look at some things that Jesus said. And I've gone through this previously, but we need to review it. Mark chapter 3. The scribes, the Pharisees, were of course condemning Jesus. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul. Jesus is possessed. And by the prince of demons, he casts out the demons. And... Jesus called them to him and said to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? Notice Jesus is not simply telling them a spiritual truth right now. He is telling them a spiritual truth in a parable. That means it's prophetic. It is going to have a future application. 
Now, I read from Mark 3 last time. Today, I want to read from Matthew 12, which is the same event. Matthew 12, verse 22. Then a demon-oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to him, Jesus. And he healed him so that the man spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, the scribes and the Pharisees are the same. When they heard it, they said, It is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man casts out demons. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons... Then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? Then indeed he may plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people. But the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Jesus here is telling a parable about the future of Satan's kingdom. Satan has ruled this world. The governments of this world have been ruled by the satanic spirit. They've been ruled by Babylon the Great. That's why We never see justice done when it comes to some big event. Sure, we see some justice sometimes on a very small scale in a county or something, in a state. But when it comes to the big things, the big players, the Obamas, the Clintons, the Bushes, the Comeys, the Brennans, the Clappers, we do not see justice at least not yet. And that's because Babylon the Great rules and Babylon the Great protects her own. So she protects those people who implement her satanic agenda. But Jesus now, he is telling a parable that is really a prophecy. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How can his kingdom stand? In Revelation 17, we learn about an eighth beast who at the time that John wrote this had not yet come. I said that I believe the eighth, the head of the eighth beast is Donald Trump. What's so significant about this eighth head? Well, let's look at the very end of chapter 17. And the angel said to me, The waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. It's the whole world. Babylon the Great encompasses the whole world. It controls all the nations of the world until now. And the ten horns that you saw, which are kings, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast, to the government that controls the workings of the world, until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. The time has come where the beast 
is throwing off the woman. That's why we have seen this animosity, this anger, this vitriol, this hatred, this murderous spirit come against Donald Trump and those who support him. Those people understand that he doesn't work for them anymore. He's not part of Babylon the Great anymore. He came out of Babylon the Great. And now he is leading the charge against Babylon the Great. Kingdom got or Satan's kingdom was divided when Donald Trump was elected president. It's not to say that Donald Trump suddenly was working for the kingdom of God and that all of his uh, decisions were righteous and right. No. But God uses the men that he wants, just as he used Cyrus. This is the spirit of Cyrus that has come upon Donald Trump. The spirit of Persia, of Medea Persia, that took over Babylon way back over 500 years before Christ was born. It's the same pattern now where you're having that spirit, the spirit of Cyrus, the spirit of Persia, destroying Babylon. That's what's happening now. Now, I've told you that before, but now we are going to proceed to the next step, which is where we started today. 2 Thessalonians. In the English Standard Version, it says this, Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come, unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. This has happened. Donald Trump's actions against Babylon the Great have forced the man of lawlessness, those who still cling to Babylon the Great, to reveal their lawlessness. It was not apparent to everyone in the world that the entire media worked for the deep state, that the entire media worked for Babylon the Great. It was not apparent to all the people that everything that these people did was lawless, that behind closed doors, they do not allow due process. They do not allow truth. They do not allow justice. No. They're only in it for themselves and they're only in it to win. And they don't care how they win. Until Donald Trump was elected, you didn't know that most of the elections were won by fraud, by deceit, that the computerized polling places always cheated toward the candidate that worked for Babylon the Great. We didn't know that. But now, after three years, and even more now, we see the incredible lawlessness that has ruled over America and the entire world. The man of lawlessness has been revealed. The man of lawlessness has been revealed. So now as we hear Q and others say that what is 
going to happen is going to be biblical, now we should begin to understand why. Because we're there. This is it. This is it. And the question is, are you ready? Am I ready? Look at this man of lawlessness. He opposes and exalts himself against every so-called good, God, or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. The temple of God is man. These people who are part of Babylon the Great, they are the ones who define good and evil now. They're the ones who call good things evil and evil things good. They are the ones who say that gender is fluid, that a five-year-old can decide that he's a different gender and then support the parents when they do things to that poor child's body that would try to change that child from one sex to another surgically or with drugs. It's insane. It's insanity. They are the ones who support abortion to the day of the day of birth. They're the ones as their governor, current governor of Virginia said, who would support killing the baby after it's born. They are the ones who stir up the Antifa thugs against Donald Trump supporters. They are the ones who create the false flag attacks. They are the ones who created the 911 travesty. They are the ones who perpetrated the moon hoax, going to the moon. They are the ones who have told us that things are true when they are utterly false. They are the ones who have hidden the knowledge of God. And now, the rebellion occurred. Let's look at another word here in this Jewish Bible. The revolt. The beast revolted against Babylon the Great, and Babylon the Great is mad. But what does the prophecy say? The beast will destroy her. And that's what we're looking at right now. That's what we're watching. That's why this is so profound. We are watching biblical prophecy come to fruition right now. I'm going to pull the whole thing down. I'm going to bring the whole fucking diseased, corrupt temple down on your head. 